Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hart HP 5V50 20 volt hand vac. So let's get started. And starting off at the rear of the tool, we have the 20 volt battery slot. This will accept any of Hart's 20 volt batteries. And moving forward, we have the hand grip. Now overall, the hand grip is good for people with small to medium sized hands. If you have larger sized hands, it might be a little bit small, but overall I think it'll still be completely functional. And the fact that it's been rubberized is also a nice feature. I think these hand vacs have come a long way since the early days of the Dust Devils and they're all plastic handles, which were super uncomfortable to hold and just looked like crap. So overall, I really do like the rubberized hand grip on this. Moving to the top of the vacuum, we have the on off switch. Overall, the switch is a nice solid switch. It is a little bit stiff, but I'd be willing to bet that over time it will loosen up. So overall, I think the switch is just fine. And moving on, we have the dust cup release button. Now overall, the button works just fine. And I really don't think you're going to accidentally bump it. And that's really about it. Okay, moving on to the dust cup. Overall, the dust cup is made out of a transparent plastic and it is definitely on the small side. Now, I personally would have liked it to be bigger, but then that would have interfered with another hand vac that Hart also offers, which is much more expensive. So overall, it is adequate for doing a decent job, but it's definitely going to run out of space fairly quickly. So that is definitely a negative. One good thing about the dust cup, however, is the fact that the cup itself can accept standard round side rounded attachments i'm not exactly sure the exact size of the attachments that this can accept but you should be able to figure out how to adapt something over whether you buy something or make it yourself it doesn't have one of those proprietary openings that a lot of hand vacs seem to have these days and that it is a pain to try to adapt anything onto so overall the fact that it has a round entry port or vacuum port is definitely a pro in my opinion so that is a nice feature of this vacuum Okay, moving on to something that isn't as good, and that would be the filtering system. Now, overall, the filtering system does do its job. It just does its job very poorly. So let's talk about it real quick. Now, the part I'm holding in my hand right now is the filter housing itself, and it has a pre-filter screen to keep out larger debris. Overall, this screen fills up too quickly and will definitely lead to a loss in suction because the air won't be able to move through it because of how small the screen is. So that is a weak point. Moving on to the filter itself, well, the filter itself is a very thin paper filter, and after the first few minutes of use, if you open up the vacuum cleaner and look at the filter, you'll probably already see dust particles working their way through the filter. So overall, the filter is also definitely lacking. Now, another flaw in the design of the filter housing would be the fact that the rubber seal also holds the filter housing in place. Now, when the vacuum cleaner or the filter housing is clean, this is in theory works great and won't come loose easily. The problem is that once there's a little bit of dirt on that seal, it loses all of its ability to hold itself in place and will become, well, a problem for when you're emptying the dust cup. When you empty the dust cup after use, you're going to want to make sure that the dust cup is in an upright position where the debris can't fall out because the filter housing is definitely not going to be keeping that debris in place. So overall, I really would have preferred a better way of keeping the filter housing in place. The rubber seal just is not adequate for doing the job. Okay, now there is a little bit of a hack here that you can do in order to keep that screen on the filter housing free of debris and to help with the overall filtration. And that is to put a coffee filter inside the vacuum cleaner. What you'd end up doing is you'd end up putting a small or medium sized coffee filter over the debris side of the filter housing and then you'd insert the, the, the filter housing into place and then you'd in, put the dust compartment onto the vacuum cleaner. This does seem to work and I have had good luck with doing this. So overall I would definitely say it's worth giving it a try if you're experiencing a loss of suction. So overall just something else to keep in mind. Okay, moving to the underside of the vacuum cleaner, we have a wall mount point. Unfortunately, it does not include a wall mount and you'll have to provide your own, but at least there's a point where you can do it if you wish. 
And directly behind the wall mount, we have two exhaust ports that are facing downward and a third that is facing backward, but the battery will cause the air to deflect downward. Overall, I really hate having these exhaust ports on the underside of the vacuum cleaner because they will blow debris around before you are able to vacuum it up. I'm going to be putting tape over mine since there are quite a few other ports on the body of this vacuum cleaner. So that's just something I'm going to do. If you decide to do this uh, too, just remember that I'm not sure what the overall effect this will have on the tool so do it at your own risk okay moving on to the hose overall the hose is about two feet long and made out of a fairly rigid plastic it is flexible enough to get into tight spaces it's just not as flexible as i personally would have liked but then again at this price point you really can't expect to have a super high quality hose so overall i am glad it has a hose and next up we have the floor nozzle. It's the exact same floor nozzle that comes with Hart's battery operated shop vac and I think it does an okay job. I personally would have liked to have seen it to be a little bit wider and the depth of it to be a little bit narrower but overall it does its job and it will do a decent job with this particular vac. Next up we have this nylon brush uh, nozzle attachment for removing hair. Overall it does an okay job. I think the bristles are already starting to deform so I'm not sure how long it's going to last. And the fact that the head rotates is kind of cool, but at the same time, it snaps off. You can reattach it super easily, but I'm just not a huge fan of this particular tool, and I don't use it a whole lot. So, it's just kind of meh. And next up, we have the crevice tool. Overall, the crevice tool, I think, does a good job on this particular vacuum. I personally would have preferred it to be longer and narrower, but I think it does a good job, and I think it'll definitely be useful, especially when paired with the hose. So overall, I do like the crevice tool attachment for this particular vacuum, even if I wouldn't necessarily call it a crevice tool, personally. Now moving on to weight, the vacuum cleaner without a battery or any attachments will weigh right around 892 grams, which is almost two pounds. And with a four amp hour battery, hose, and nozzle attachment, the vacuum cleaner will weigh right around 3.6 pounds or 1,644 grams. Okay, in use, the vacuum cleaner is, well, I'd say right around in the middle of the pack when it comes to the noise level. It's definitely not gonna be winning any awards for being quiet or whispering. But at the same time, I don't think you're going to have to worry about waking up your neighbor two miles away either. So I think it's okay, at least when it comes to the level of the noise. Okay, let's talk about suction. Without any attachments, the vacuum cleaner will do a decent job picking up small debris such as dirt, sand, wood chipping shavings, or even the occasional small coin. Okay, the floor nozzle attachment should be able to handle most of your small debris such as dirt, sand, wood chipping shavings, sawdust, pet feed, if it's small and light, it should be able to handle it. Now, metallic objects are going to be too much, at least on this particular vacuum floor nozzle attachment, and you're going to be out of luck with any coin that's probably bigger than a dime. So overall, the performance with the floor nozzle is adequate, but not superb. And next up, we have the upholstery brush. Overall, it does a decent job when you're working with the carpet or with the upholstery. But in my opinion, it's still the weak link of all the attachments. I think the a solid design would have been better than this rotating design, and I think it would have held up better. I personally would have made the br bristles or the brush part of the attachment a little bit stronger and maybe a little shorter, but it does its job and I'm glad they include it. It's just not my go-to attachment. And next up, we have the crevice tool. Overall, the crevice tool, I think, is definitely the best attachment for this tool. If you approach your debris at a side angle, you'll pretty much be able to suck up any sort of debris, whether it be small dust and dirt, all the way up to quarter-sized coins. So overall, I definitely do like using the crevice tool on this particular vacuum, even if I don't think the crevice tool is all that great for getting into crevices. And if you use any of the attachments with the hose, you will get a slight reduction in the suction power, but overall you will still be able to complete pretty much most of the jobs that you were able to do beforehand. I think the hose is definitely a useful attachment and I definitely do use it quite a bit when working in vehicles. So overall the hose is definitely usable with this particular vacuum. Okay, let's talk about what I think the pros and cons are. And the first pro would be 20 slash 18 volts. A lot of these hand vacs are in the 12 volt range and I personally don't think that's enough for a vacuum. So I really do like the fact that these are 18 or 20 volts depending on when you measure the voltage. So pro. And the next pro would be the price. This vacuum cleaner costs right around $40 and I think that's actually a fairly good price for this vacuum cleaner. During the holidays, however, sometimes you can even find it at lower prices. So just keep your eye out. 
And the next pro would be the build. Overall, the build on this vacuum cleaner is actually very good. Considering the price point, it is very well worth the price, and I definitely think everything on it feels nice and solid, and it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart at the first sign of trouble. And the next pro would be the suction. The suction is actually fairly decent for considering the size of this vacuum cleaner, and that's due to its voltage. So overall, I do think the suction is plenty adequate for this particular vacuum. Hose. Overall, the fact that this can use a hose definitely makes this a much more usable tool and definitely a lot more recommendable. So overall, I really do like having a hose on this particular handbag. And the next pro would be the round port. Overall, having the round port definitely makes this much more user friendly than one of the vacuum cleaners that has a proprietary accessory port. I know some people don't like that they're not as secure and they rotate and they can fall off easier, but at the same time, it's way easier to adapt tools onto this vacuum cleaner. And I definitely like that. For me personally, this is the only way I will buy a hand vac. So this is definitely a pro in my opinion. Rubberized grip. Overall, the rubberized grip on this vacuum cleaner feels extremely nice. I really like having the rubberized grip versus having a plastic grip. They're more comfortable to hold and it makes the tool look nicer. So overall, having the rubberized grip is definitely a pro. And the last pro would be the runtime. Using a four amp hour battery, I was getting 30 plus minutes of runtime. And I think that's actually pretty good considering the price point. Now, please keep in mind that that's with a four amp hour battery, not one of the little pathetic 1.5 amp hour batteries. So quite frankly, I think the runtime is a pro. And the first meh are the tools or accessories. Overall, they get the job done and they do a decent job. I just don't think that they're the best in the world. So they're not really a pro. They're really not a con. They're just meh. And the first con would be the vents. Now, most of the vents are just fine. It's just those three on the bottom that I have an issue with. I think those three are really badly designed. I'm really not sure why they decided to let it get released with the way that those vents are. So overall, in my opinion, that's why it's a con. And the next con would be the dust cup size. Overall, this dust cup is very small. I think if you wanted to fix this, you could probably adapt over one of the Makita Cyclonic vacuum attachments from one of their stick vacs, and I think that would definitely be a doable thing. So overall, the dust cup size is a con in my opinion, but there might be a workaround here. And the last con would be the filter assembly. Overall, the filter assembly is just not very well designed. I think the idea that they were going for seems to be a good idea. I just don't think it was implemented very well. So overall, the filter, filter assembly is definitely a con in my opinion. And that is it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on this particular hand vacuum. Overall, I actually do like this hand vacuum and I would recommend it. I think the fact that you can use all the different attachments as well as the hose, the price point, the amount of power it has are all really good features. And most of the cons are either fixable with hacks or mods or aren't really that big of an issue to begin with. So overall, I really do recommend this vacuum cleaner. So it comes recommended. Okay, and that's about it for the video. The next section of the video is really only for the holiday season of 2021. So if you're past the holidays of 2021, stop watching. And with that being said, here are some of the other heart 20 volt deals on walmart.com right now. Of course, starting off, we have the vacuum I just reviewed as well as a dual inflator. Now, I don't personally own this one, but I have a family member that just got it, so I might end up reviewing it soon. So, but $20 is an exceptional price for this tool. And then next we have a little 20 volt blower. Now overall, I really actually enjoy using this little blower. It's a nice lightweight small blower and it has lots of power. Now the one downside to it is it's super loud. And last but not least, we have this 20 volt cordless LED spotlight, which I also own. And I think it's a very good spotlight. So I'll review that eventually as well. So that's about it for the deals. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. God bless.